Hey guys, today I'm going to be painting an autumn golf course landscape scene. I have all my paint set up with my canvas. There's a better picture of the golf course scene. I also printed it out here just so you guys can see how I'm going to be using the grid method. And we're going to be using oil paint today. We have yellow ochre, ultramarine blue, phthalo green. Uh, I'm not sure what that one was. That was left over from yesterday. Uh, this is just a blend of phthalo green and some of my cerulean blue. This one I believe is phthalo blue. We have titanium white. This guy here is sap green, um, burnt umber, burnt sienna, cadmium yellow light, cadmium yellow medium, cadmium red light, flesh tint, permanent rose, and alizarin crimson. So we're going to start out with these sets of colors here and first I'm going to sketch out the concept. I have the grid already on my painting and I have the grid on my reference image there. Just give me a second to get this set up. All right. Good. Okay, so as you guys can see, my printer is not doing so great with the autumn colors. These trees are very vibrant orange and yellow, but this is just a good little uh, practice sheet to show you how I use the grid method. So I have my grid here. Each of these little squares is also on my canvas and everything that is in this little space on my reference image will be in this little space on my canvas. I have the same amount of lines and uh, grids on the paper as I do on the canvas. So everything should match up between my reference image and the canvas exactly. All right, let's see. Hi, Jamie. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna get to painting here. So I'm not gonna read the chat for a little bit, but if you have any questions, just let me know while I'm working. All right, so I'm thinning down my paint with my uh, mineral spirits. It's not really mineral spirits, it's a citrus solvent. So I guess it's a safer alternative to mineral spirits. And I'm just dipping it into my ultramarine blue just to uh, get started here with sketching out the painting. So I'm using a flat tipped smaller brush. And I'm just gonna start with, hold this reference up for you guys. Can we see this? Yep. So I'm just going to start out with uh, this center box here. We have the spot where we have the base of the land and it kind of meets our tree line here. So our tree line comes up about halfway in that spot there. And that just gives us like a rough idea of where our tree line is. And then this uh, flat line goes most of the way flat and straight and then it kind of bends off to the side a little bit. And then over here we lose that line so it kind of comes down. I guess you could say it comes like this. So we can do that. There. Oops, still stays in this box. There we go. And then we have our tree line over here. Whoops, this tree is way closer to that line. Just quickly marking where my trees are going to be. Got a few stumps in here too. All right, and next let's work on our fairway. So it's difficult to tell in this reference image where our fairway is about right there.
And on this side, just pretending that those bunkers aren't there right now, and we'll add those later. Okay. Now we can add our bunkers. So we have one right here. It's about right to the top of that box. We have one here and one here. Got some more trees in here. And the trees are getting smaller as they're getting further away from us. We have the general course sketched out here. We have the fairway, we have the bunkers, the rough, and then just very little, uh, very minorly detailed uh, blobs for our trees currently. So what I do when I make a landscape painting is I start with the background and the thing that's the farthest in the back from us is our sky. So I'm gonna start by painting the sky we have some very soft clouds. They're a little bit light pink. Uh, we have some light blue in the top of the sky. Definitely have phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, permanent rose, flesh tint, and a little bit of cadmium yellow in that sky. So I'm gonna get started with that in a second. Let me just see if I can check on the chat here. Oh, okay, so Draw Ninja was asking about that brown pigment that I used to prime the canvas. That's a great question. So that uh, is just like a wash that I do sometimes before. I don't always do it, uh, but it helps you if your canvas is white and then you just start painting colors, it's difficult to really get a true judgment of the color when your canvas is pure white. It'll make your colors look darker. So if you start with like a wash for your background, then it makes your colors a little bit more true to what they really are and you don't overdo your uh, like your darker shades or you don't make your light colors too bright because you're not comparing it to white anymore, you're comparing it to a neutral background. So that's what I do that background for. There may be other reasons as well. I guess um, for some artists when they do a bunch of layers of gesso, they'll also do one of these layers so the paint glides on a little bit more smoothly. So there are a couple different uh, reasons for using that. Yeah, thanks. Great question. Thanks, Jamie. She said, I'm loving how this unfolds. <laughs> Tron Ninja is going to learn my awesome techniques and steal them. <laughs> All right, sounds great. All right, so now I'm going to start working on painting that sky. So we're going to start with the top. We have like a nice blue sky up here, and then we have some really faint clouds kind of coming down here. One of those nice calm autumn cloudy days so i'm gonna go up a brush size now this is an angled flat tipped brush and we're gonna mix let me change the angle so you guys can see me blend some colors here there you go all right so here's my palette this i used to use a uh, tin foil and now i started using parchment paper for my palettes they're nice and easy because they're disposable so whenever your paint dries or you completely covered up your palette, then you can just, you know, throw it away. But also it's really great because your oil just stays right on there. It doesn't really bleed into it. All right, so we're gonna use Thala Blue, white, and then this color that I made yesterday, I think will help to warm up that blue a little bit. Maybe even like a hint of this Thala Green. A little more thalo green. All right, I like that color. That looks pretty close. And now I will leave that brush right there. And I'm gonna mix some colors for the clouds. So I'm gonna get some white, some ultramarine blue. And see how that gives us a little more of a purple type of blue. 
So that color is definitely in those clouds. I'm gonna make another one with the paint that's already on the brush, adding some flesh tints. Maybe not that much, there we go. Ooh, that's a strong flesh tint. That's a new tube of paint I just opened and that is a very strong pigmented color. We're gonna add more white to that. That's a little too much color. Okay, so we definitely have a s color close to that in the sky. I don't know if it actually is that cool. So what I'm gonna do is clean off my paint from my brush, grab some more white, and now I'm gonna try just a little bit of permanent rose, just a little bit, and a little bit of cadmium yellow light and blend those two together. Did a little too much cadmium light. So we'll add more permanent rose. It's a nice warm color. All right. Grab some more white here. All right, we got some white and a little bit of cadmium yellow. Yeah, we definitely have that color, maybe a hint of red. And that red is also very strongly pigmented. All right, so now we got some nice soft pastel-y looking colors for our sky. I'm gonna tilt the the camera back on the canvas so you guys can see me start to paint the sky. All right. So I'm starting with that blue up in the top. So I'm referencing an image for my sky, but I'm not going to make it exactly like the reference photograph. Part of the reason is because it's not my reference photograph, so I don't want to copy it exactly like I see it. And the other reason is it's easier to just kind of make your own sky instead of trying to match it perfectly with what you're seeing in a photograph. Okay. Adding a hint more saturation up here. If you just add a little bit of blue onto your brush, you can just put it right on there and blend it in with the color already on your canvas. Same thing with white, if you want to lighten up that background. I just add a little bit of white. And then as our sky moves closer down to the horizon, we lose some of that saturation. It gets more faded and white. So I'm just going to take some white and I already have blue on my brush and I'm just going to kind of Back and forth, blend that in, and the colors will just kind of blend in together. And since I used ultramarine blue for my sketch, that's bleeding in a little bit too, but we do have that color in the sky, so that is A-OK -okay with me. I'm going to work on this painting for about another half hour, just trying to get the base layer of color onto this piece. And then I'm going to 
let it sit and dry for a day or two, and then we'll work on this some more. I'm thinking I'm gonna get this done in about three parts of this video. So this golf course landscape, if you saw one of my recent videos, I uh, let you know that I'm going to be making a golf course landscape painting calendar. And this is one of those paintings that will be part of the calendar. All right, so we have a bunch of cloud coverage up in here. So I'm gonna start to use that. First I'm gonna get the paint off of my brush so I don't have any more phthalo blue on my brush. And now I'm gonna start using that mixture I made of the ultramarine blue with the white. And this is our cloud color. So for now, I'm just kind of letting that color blend softly into my background sky. And I think in the next video is when I'm going to come back and really define the borders of my cloud. So for now, I'm just trying to get the color in there just to get an idea of where this cloud's going to be. And our clouds are getting smaller as they're coming down towards the horizon because they're farther away from us down there. And we're gonna have some up here too. oriented kind of diagonally. So I'm just starting to give them some shape. And then we'll build these up more next time. All right, and we have more of that kind of purple color down in here. And we have our lighter colors down here, which right now they're just blending in with our background. So we're going to come back and finish this up later. Okay, let's see. I'll check the chat real quick. <laughs> All right, let's see. Okay, Draw Ninja said he makes his background gray. That's also a good idea. That's a nice neutral color. Do I have merch? Uh, so I sell prints of my paintings and uh, I use the website Fine Art America. So they print onto uh, fine art paper. They also print 
onto like steel boards, uh, wooden boards. Um, they can do canvas prints. They can print onto shower curtains, yoga mats, notebooks, uh, towels, all kinds of stuff. So yes, I, I do have merch in that sense. <laughs> I don't sell it um, on my own. I don't get it made on my own, but uh, Fine Art America does do that for me. <laughs> don't lay the paint off with a rag. Do like Bob Ross and beat the snot out of it. Nice. <laughs> Gotta love Bob Ross. All right, he says, I see what you mean by having something to compare the pigment to. Uh, if the canvas was white during the clouds, it would have been a little less authentic looking. Yeah, so if I had a white background right now, then those clouds, I may have made them darker because I would be comparing it to this white background and I would think, oh, those don't look very dark. Those look pretty light. I think I need to darken them. So I could have ended up making the sky a little bit too dark if I was comparing it to a white base instead of this neutral brown base. Cool, all right, so uh, the base for the sky is done for now. We're gonna come back later and add more detail in the clouds and really give that sky some depth. Uh, but for now, we're gonna let it dry and we're gonna start working on just filling in some base color for our tree line and then our fairway and the rough right down here in the foreground. So starting back, making our way forward, the next thing we have to work with are these trees that are really small because they're really far in the background. So we have some, oops, let me look back on the palette for you. There we go. Focus. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna use, right here I just grab some sap green and we definitely have a lot of that in this painting. We also have some of this sap green mixed with phthalo green and phthalo blue. So see, that's just a cooler green. And we definitely have that going on. Um, we also have some browns. So we're gonna mix, I'm gonna get this paint off my brush a little bit. We have, I'm gonna use burnt sienna with some of our lizard and crimson. And I'm gonna mix a little bit of phthalo blue in there too to cool that down, bring it a little bit of a darker shade. And then I'm gonna add some white because this is farther in the background. So even though it is dark, we want to brighten it up a bit because we aren't going to have anything truly that dark at that far of a distance back here. So I'll start with that. I see a little bit of that color in a tree here. Uh, for now, I'm not going too much into the detail with the limbs and the uh, leaves. We'll do that later. Now here we got a little guy that's more green. And then we've got some pure sap green looking tree here, which is gonna get darker later, but for now we'll just leave it as a marker. And I'm gonna use that teal color. I see something that looks kind of teal back here. Oops, you know what? I, I'm sorry, I did not show you the painting again. There you go. <laughs> got caught up painting and stopped uh, thinking about what I was doing there. Okay, so we got this guy here. There's where I just put that little teal tree. And then we have a larger tree here that is a mix of sap green with some yellow and some of our ultramarine blue. Again, these are gonna get darker right now. They're kind of blending in with that sky. All right, mix some of my cadmium red with my cadmium yellow medium. Can't tell if this is sunrise or sunset at this course, but it's definitely a golden hour. So you have a lot of gold up in the trees. Use a little bit of brown here. If you ever want to cool down your colors, just add some blue and that should cool them down. I do that a lot. Down here, just adding some blue to 
to show that these trees are in shadow. Okay, we got a hint more orange here. We have more trees in shadow. Mix some. Burnt sienna with my burnt umber. That'll give us a nice orange brown right up here. Again, not going too detailed with the leaves yet, just kind of making a little bit of a rough edge so we can tell it's not a perfect little blob, but it has pieces that just stick out up into the sky. And then we have a little bit more contrast as we're moving closer to the foreground here. So we're going to have a little bit darker trees with uh, brighter highlights as we're moving closer to the foreground. Okay. So we got that side all good to go. Next, we'll move over a little bit. More sap green colored trees. Here we have another more teal looking tree. I'm going to go back with my burnt sienna. Take some cadmium yellow, a little bit of yellow ochre. And that'll give me this guy here. And this one's got a much darker backside. So we have part of the tree in shadow. All right. And we, this tree is mostly yellow ochre coming up. It's definitely much lighter than the other trees. And now we have a tree that has some nice warm orange. And that orange tree kind of fades into a reddish brown. And then into a green. Perfect autumn tree.
and now I'm just blending some cadmium red and cadmium yellow light with the colors I already had on my brush, so it's a little muddy. Alright, so now I'm going to mix some cadmium yellow with phthalo blue. That'll give me this color in here. Just a hint of that color. It's, it's a very strong green. So I don't want to go too crazy with that. Alright, got more shadows down here. Okay, I'm going to stop and check if there's anything new in the chat real quick. Nice, okay. Nothing new in the chat. Back to painting. Whoops. <laughs> Alright, so here we have a nice yellow cloud. So again, cleaning off my brush because I don't want to muddy the yellow too much. Actually, mix some yellow ochre and some white with that. Now we're going to use some of our cadmium yellow medium mixed with some cadmium red. And then we're going to pull some burnt sienna or cadmium red. Oops, a little, a little too much cadmium red. <laughs> but as you can see, we have a nice blend of fall colors here. That just have a really nice border around our golf course. A little more sap green up here. Alrighty. Great, so now we have just the basic colors for our trees put down. And now I'm going to start to work on the actual golf course. So way far in the back. The sun is illuminating parts of this course as it's kind of, you know, filtering through the trees. So parts of this course are going to have a lot more yellow and some parts are going to be cooler. So I'm just going to start back here where we have a lot of light filtering in. Like that. I'm going to grab another brush here and I'm going to mix some phthalo blue with phthalo green and cadmium yellow medium. I'm going to use that for my shadow color. Just kind of let it blend very softly, not too much. I'm going back with my lighter color where we have another highlight. Back with the cool color. You know what? I realized I forgot to sketch in the fairway over here. Let's do that real quick. So 
Now we're going to start to do some of the rough. So our rough has a little bit more sap green and phthalo blue in it. So I'm just going to fill in some of that color. Basically just right up to the edge of our tree line. And then we'll go back in later and we'll add those tree trunks, more details to the leaves, more highlights, all that fun stuff. I guess I can add a couple little highlights peeking in here. For now, I'm just gonna forget about them. And this right here is very golden. The light is really hitting the grass here. And that feeds right into a nice highlight. I'm going to add our shadows again. So I'm mixing hints of brown in now into my green. I'm going to mix a little blue in here. dark. Very hint of my teal too. And I'm just going to blend my light color back in without going too crazy. All right, now we can finish the rough around the edges of the fairway. So I'm gonna use my, this is pretty dark. So I'm gonna use my sap green, phthalo blue, uh, burnt umber. And my phthalo green. So that's gonna give me a really dark green for this area that's all in shadow. And by having our foreground in shadow like this and darker, then it's going to pull our eyes to these nice bright autumn leaves. And that is what I'm hoping for in this painting. So nice dark foreground draws our attention right back to the bright leaves. Just keeping the basic shape that I sketched out earlier.
All right, and then since we have highlights kind of coming in in this area, we can brighten this part up a bit, brighten this part up a bit, just so that that will make sense with the light coming in. And what else we gotta get? This back here. Again, I'm just painting over where the tree trunks are going to go because we'll fill those in later. And we got some shadows right here behind these bunkers. All right, all I got to do now is start with a basic little fill in color for the bunkers. Most of them are just like a ultramarine blue with white they are in the shadows for the most part we'll go back later and add the highlights so there's a section of this one that has highlight in it so here I'm just using a round tipped brush and a flat tip brush would also work for this just get it nice and even if your colors start to blend a little bit, don't worry about it because we're just working on getting a base color right now. Okay, now we got this bunker over here. It's a little bit more complicated of a shape. And as you can see, that color is blending with my green, but I'm going to paint over it later. So no big deal. We still know it's different than the grass. We're going to get that spot. Now we have back here, there's a little one. And our sand traps are getting much smaller as they're getting farther away from you also. Got one over here. And a little guy like right there. Let's touch this up a bit. There we go. Okay. So first layer of paint is down. We're going to let this dry for maybe a couple days. And then I will finish up the sky in part two. I'll try to get the sky finished up and maybe touch up the green. And then I'm thinking in part three, we're gonna add all the detail to the trees and finish defining all of these highlights and shadows uh, in our fairway there. So here was my little reference just to show you guys how I started using the grid method. Here's part one, all done with part one. Painting's not done, <laughs> but we got just that nice base color down and then next, we're going to start to add some details. And look at this. Just doing part one, I got my hand completely covered in paint. <laughs> All right, so thanks for sticking around and watching, guys. Uh, I think in a couple days, we'll come back with part two. So uh, if you're not already subscribed with the notification bell, please hit those buttons for me so that you don't miss part two. All right, talk to you later. Bye-bye.